Happy belated Valentine's Day for Let's Talk Jinx. I'm just going to leave the overlay from the video we did on the other channel up, because why not? But also, okay, so I think, I don't know if I'm getting dyslexic or what, but we're going to go over some of these changes that are coming in the next patch, because some of them won't really affect Jinx too much, but they'll be interesting to talk about for a Jinx video. And what could affect Jinx, but I misread Malphite as Markiplier for some reason. And so for a split second, because I woke up tired, I was like, oh, wh why is Markiplier getting buffed in League of Legends? And then boom, there you go. You, got, you suddenly got a title and stuff to draw people in. Markiplier getting nerfed and buffed in League of Legends in patch 13.4. And then uh, that, there you go. No, that's, that's, that's clickbait. There's sensation sensationalization. All right. There's intrigue, in which case you do want to like intrigue people to watch your video, but then deliver on the question you intrigue them with. And then there's clickbait. I'm pretty sure that's clickbait. Unless you two also have dyslexia and you are misreading Malphite as, as Markiplier. So there we go. Now, getting to this video, they have some champion buffs and nerfs coming. And part of the reason I want to talk about it for a Jinx video, and I'll we'll probably go more in depth next week, is because there's some support changes that are coming that might shake up the meta down bottom lane. And now we've, we're always biased, so my job is to say that Jinx can really play with any support. But some people prefer enchanters, and some people prefer the more melee, like hard engage supports, especially if they're tanky, because it's an extra front line and usually another way to peel for Jinx. So things like Alistar here. I can't zoom in any more than this. Maybe if I open this in a new tab, it'll give me the option to zoom. There we go. Okay, because that was uh, kind of, now I can definitely, it's definitely Malphite. Unless it is Markiplier and my dyslexia is making it Malphite. In which case, tell me that about that in the comments below. But like, yeah, Alistair is getting some changes to the passive heal, like when he roars and it heals nearby people, stuff like that. And it's going up to 7%. The AP ratios are actually going up, so his combo is going to hurt a little bit more, which makes sense. When you're an enchanter, your job is mainly to peel and protect. When you're an engaged support, you want to hurt people and keep your people from getting hurt. That's kind of the idea. Um, which you might be like, isn't that what enchanters like to do? Because he just said peel and protect. Yes and no. En enchanters are really good at peeling and protecting and healing and stuff like that. Um, bruisers are kind of the uh, the memo of, you know what the best defense is? A good offense. You know what? If you're attacking them, they can't really attack you, right? Like if you're engaging on the enemy, they're going to have a hard time engaging on you. That's the idea, right? So that being said, we're going to see this pattern probably play out amongst a couple of different ones. For a matter of fact, we'll just mention Malphite because we just we went all this. So, so Markiplier's WCD is getting changed and decreased. His uh, W attack armor ratio is actually going up, which will be interesting. That means if you don't play the champion, by the way, when you max W, the passive armor and then armor you build is also like increases his size and then extra armor. So that's actually an interesting change if you want to make him really tanky and kind of wean him off of the AP uh, build. The W cone armor ratio is also going up from 15% to 20%, so it's swole. Gotcha. Let's see. As we continue, and these are the buffs. There are some nerfs, and uh, some of them are interesting as well, but none of them not really quite to any support changes or other AD carries not named Samira, which there's quite a bit. The HP is going down plus level 99, you know, by about 30 the AP ratio is going from 100% to 70. The lifesteal effectiveness, they're keep cutting the lifesteal on Samira because she still can heal quite a bit. Uh, so there we go. Thresh max order. So this is going to be interesting. So we've talked about this in the past. If you've been playing with a Thresh in the bottom lane, you're Jinx, you have a Thresh with you, right? Or, or a Blitzcrank. With Blitzcrank, they tend to max Q first because there's a lot of damage on Blitzcrank's hook. So if you get grabbed... Like, you'll still do the E and uppercut people and stuff like that, sure. But most of the time, a lot of the damage on for Blitzcrank is on that Q, even if you don't get the E off. So it's a really threatening ability. You pull people to you instantly. It's very it's Blitzcrank. Thresh has always been the opposite, if you didn't know. Uh, they usually max their E first, the Flay. Because the Flay tends to have a lot more damage on it than the Q, depending on how you play it. If you run at people, then you Flay, then you Hook. If you hook somebody, kind of go up to them, then flay, because you don't have to, they're not far away enough that you have to reactivate the hook. So this is interesting that it looks like they want to change that. With the Q damage going from 100, 145, 190, 235, and 280 plus 80 percent AP to five extra at all those levels, up to 15, up to 20 by the max level, and also 90 percent AP. And the cooldowns also being slightly lowered by like half a second across the board, it looks like. Uh, the W shield, which is always, you know, interesting. The cooldown on that, it looks like, is changing. It's going down by like a single second, while the shield strength is also going down, it looks like, as it scales. 
Okay. Now the E, meanwhile, is also getting buffed. So it looks like the damage is scaling up to an extra 20 by max, but the AP is going from 60% to 70%. So it's funny that they named this Thresh Max Order. Because I guess what they're basically saying is everything's going to be a little stronger. Because even though the shield itself looks like it's going to be weaker, the cooldown is going to be up slightly more often to save people's lives. So in your lane, what I'm basically saying is if you're used to Thresh's like walking up and flaying people and they want to experiment with doing the hook instead because the hook feels like it does more of 90% AP, you might see those adjustments happen in the lane uh, playing with the Thresh. You still play as Jinx in this scenario accordingly the same way, virtually. You want the Flame Chompers ready and stuff like that. Uh, we'll see how that plays out. Literally nothing might change except Thresh does a little bit more damage. Like the engaged supports like we're talking about in this theme of this video of wanting to do more damage. So, with that being said, as we continue to scroll down to the bottom here, this kind of actually is the bottom of the list. There are probably more solid changes next week as well which will be interesting to see if there's any more ad carry changes and the whatnots as we see in pro play since we all know things are balanced around pro play um a lot of ad carries are in the bottom lane and i mean a lot like four per game because there's usually two ad carries and two supports that are also playing things like caitlin and varus and i'm just waiting for jinx because we've seen draven even at this point uh jinx support let's go yeah I, I would legitimately main support if jinx was a support this uh season because I just play whatever Jinx is. If Jinx becomes a jungler next year, I'm going to jungle Jinx. That's how it works. Uh, with that being said, though, thank you so much for watching this video. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Hit the bell notification, the actual subscribe button. But I don't know which video will be next, because life can have a lot of kinks. So until this time, take care. GG, get jinxed. Thank you for watching. Bye bye